Hey there viewers, it's Charlie I'm back again with another Transformers review. And today's review is going to be on Generation 1 Sandstorm. My first G1 review in quite a while actually. Yeah, the movie figures did sort of overthrow the channel for a little bit, but hey, at least this means I've got a simple figure to transform, so that's a plus. But Sandstorm is a triple changer, so not only does he transform into a beach buggy, but he has another mode which we'll get into soon. Now, this is common knowledge, but the other triple changes in G1 were the Autobots Springer and Broadside, and the Decepticons Blitzwing, Astro Train, and Octane. And I guess you could argue that Double Dealer and Punch Cow Punch could be triple changes as well. And there are a few others in G1 as well. And throughout the other Transformers series, there are tons of other triple changes. Mixed Master from Revenge of the Fallen, for example, even though I didn't show us his third mode. But, well, to simplify, there's been lots of triple changes in Transformers history. So, yeah. But, yeah, this guy does have a third mode, which we'll get into soon, but I'm not going to spoil it. Mainly because everyone already knows what it is, so... <laughs> But let's just have a look at, at his beach buggy mode first. It's definitely cool looking. I mean, it's very orange, so someone spilled uh, Cheetos dust on him. But there's back propeller, so I'm pretty sure that this spoils his second mode. Although this could be something that... You could add to a beach buggy for a bit of flair, I guess. So this isn't entirely kibble. So clever Hasbro. <laughs> I'm gonna have a quick 360. Most of the detailing is stickers instead of tamper graphs. Yeah, like all this is stickers. These awesome insignias are stickers. This is a sticker, that's a sticker, and look, it's a rub sign. The last time we saw this was on a classics figure, Starscream. And if I just rub this, this one actually works. I mean, not fully, but it does work. But we can see that he's an Autobot, I mean, of course. But here we can see a chromed engine. Although, that's actually just his head. I mean, it's a really good way to hide the head in vehicle mode. Most G1 figures just hide the head underneath. Whereas with this figure, it actually incorporates it into the vehicle mode. So, that's really clever. So, I've got to give this guy credit. Speaking of, of the underneath. Julie bit of kibble is, well, this. You see this? It looks like a rotor. That's because it is. But, well, uh, we also got a bit of. Oh, got this the wrong way. Got a uh, cop. Uh, we have some copyright there. Hasbro Takara. Both 1986. And well, that's pretty much all I can say about the beach bu uh, buggy mode. It's definitely a cool looking vehicle mode. Oh, and the wheels do roll. Although the wheels are plastic and yeah, now that's all I have to say. It's definitely cool looking. And I would love to see a War for Cybertron trilogy version of, of, of this guy. Even if it was just a retail of Springer, like what the the Thrilling 30 Sandstorm figure was. Albeit more accurate to the G1 figure. Because keep in mind, the, the most recent Sandstorm toy we, that we've had is the Thrilling 31, and that takes a few creative liberties. 
So if we could have a War for Cybertron trilogy sandstorm, maybe, I, I don't know, just a, even if it's just a retool of Springer, as long as it looks similar to this original figure, I'll be happy with it. But I think we're long overdue for a new Sandstorm figure. But well, tangent aside, let's get on to the second mode. Of course, I'm not going to uh, move my camera this time because, well, we're not going to stand up. We're going to keep it this way. Well, we are going to actually turn it around. But to start, what we're going to do is take the engine, push it into the th this section, and then push that entire section down. Take the wheels and fold them in. Take these sides, uh, move them up. And then take these wheels and also move them up like so. Take these sections and move them up. Well, rotate them around, I meant to say. Unfortunately, it covers this Autobot insignia, but that's how you're supposed to do it. Take this entire section. Turn that around, lift this up, take the rotor, uh, pull it up, and spread it, so it, it got all four rotors, sometimes this can be easier said than done, but there we go, and here we have Sandstorm in its helicopter mode. And, well, I just love how this helicopter mode looks. It's amazing how it, it how it's do buggy modes. Pretty much the only thing that carries over is this section, and it fits right in because it's meant to be a tail rotor of a helicopter. Sure, if you look underneath, you can still see the windshield section for the doom buggy, but the wheels actually help keep it up. So, yeah, this is really cool looking. So, if we have a 360, yeah, this mode's a bit more kibbly because, as I said, we can see the windshield and we can see the wheels from the Doom Buggy mode. Especially, especially if you look at the back and still see these wheels, but it still looks really cool. The rotor does spin. Oh. If you don't accidentally get your fingers in the way. Tell rotor spins. And I just prefer Sandstorm as a helicopter over that VTOL aircraft that like he was in his Thrilling 30 figure. Which is why I think we should really get a, a War for Cybertron trilogy figure for Sandstorm. Because, well... As I said, he's long overdue, and he should just be a, a helicopter instead of that VTOL thing that he was in his Friendly 30 toy. Now, before I get onto the robot mode, I'm going to transform him back into his Doom Buggy mode, because I actually want to show a, a little fan mode that I came up with. Just a cute little fan mode that I came up with all by myself. So if I just transform him back into his dune buggy mode quickly. Oop. Forgot to flip that around. There we go. Oh, that's part of the robot mode transformation bit. Here he is, back in his uh, Doom Buggy mode. So, if I fold the wheels, well, halfway up, well, I'll transform you know, this section first. So, if I fold these halfway up, take these bits and move them up. Uh, 
And I guess I don't need to actually transform that. I like to repurpose this as like a little G1 version of his VTOL aircraft mode from his feeling from his uh, feeling 30 toy. Yeah, it's crappy and it doesn't really look that accurate, but hey, it's just a bit of fun. And remember, it's a G1 toy. The all, G1 toys are all about imagination, so. Besides, this is not even an official mode, it's just a fan mode, so. But yeah, a G1, a G1 toy version of a VTOL mode from the Filmy 30 toy. <laughs> but, okay, let's get on to the actual transformation, eh? Oh, if I can actually get this plugged in. So I'll start from the Doom Buggy mode because it's easy to get him into his robot mode from his Doom Buggy mode, so we'll start from there. So the starts, take the legs and pull them down like you do with a lot of G1 figures. Get the feet and pull them up. Of course, beware of loose copies having the legs compressed down because you don't want him, him to be a midget. <laughs> okay, I'm not I'm not trying to be racist against midgets. I'm just saying this guy's meant to be all tall. Well, I, we don't want this guy to be a micromaster, do we? There we go. No, that's better. Well, I'm probably I'm probably gonna get hated by now, but. Ah oh, well, come at me. Okay, I'll try not to do any more horrible jokes for the rest of this video. But take these bits and move them for the like you did for the helicopter mode, and move them up. Take the engine block and actually turn that around for his head. And finally, take his little arms. Unfortunately, he's got a little T-Rex arms. And, well, that's pretty much it. It's so nice to finally have a simple transformation after all those movie-verse figures. Although I think my next review is going to be one of the hardest to transform. Foreshadowing. But well, here we have Sandstorm in his robot mode. And yeah, he, he does look pretty cool. I mean, there's nothing hang hanging off the back. I mean, we do have this on, on the top of his head, but I guess it can be like a little propeller cap. <laughs> so he could be the Homestar Runner of the Transformers. <laughs> Uh, look at his face. Unfortunately, it doesn't uh, resemble his face from the G1 series. Because, if you remember, in his appearance in the G1 series, he actually had a mouth instead of his mouth plate. But hey, another mouth plated bot means he's following Corona rules, he's wearing a face mask. So, good on you, Sandstorm. Okay. So, okay, let's just change the subject. I don't, I don't know what else to say. So, normally he does have a gun, but I don't have it. I mean, hey, he can attack by using this to blow enemies away with super wind attacks. I mean, hey, I. I'm a collector. I display my figures. I don't, I don't come up with super battle scenarios. I just display my figures casually. So weapons are not really a huge concern for me unless they play, it, unless they are meant to be like parts of the vehicle mode. So this guy not having his gun, I, I don't really mind. Now articulation. Well, his head can actually move because of his transformation, 
I mean, how many G1 figures do, do you know can actually tr move their head? In fact, how many Transformers do you know have to turn their head to transform? Well, this guy, um, Kickback, Wheeljack, Landmine, um, yeah. Can't really think of any, uh, I can't think of any other off the top of my head, so. But, this is one of the few figures that actually has to transform by turning his head. But it can be articulation if you want it to. These bits can sort of move, but pretty much the only uh, uh, good arm, yeah, the only good arm articulation is here. But unfortunately, no T posing. Whoa! Damn it, G one. Yeah, G one. Uh, G1 only had articulation where the transformation joints were, so. Because there's no articulation in the legs whatsoever. It can't move forward, can't move back, you can't do the splits. The only articulation is in the head and the arms, and that's it. Well, that's pretty much all I have to say. Complaints? Well, this is a G1 figure, so I can't really complain that much. I guess it could be a bit fiddly to transform the rotors for the helicopter mode, but that's more of a nitpick. Yeah, I can't think of any actual complaints. Not just because it's a G1 figure, I legit cannot think of, of any actual complaints. This is just a really good and simple figure, so... Plus, it's actually affordable. I got this for like 20 something pounds, so... That's a good deal. Especially since most G1 figures go for like over 50 something pounds. So... I got lucky with this guy. Hmm. So, do I recommend Sandstorm? Well, if you're a G1 collector, then... Definitely. This is a really good figure. I mean, if you don't like the fact that he can't T-pose or do the splits, then... Well, maybe hesitantly go for the Feeling Fetty figure, but... It is rather different. The helicopter mode has been replaced with a VTOL aircraft. And... Well, it, it just looks different. Which is why I keep saying we really do need a, a, a War for Cybertron trilogy version of this guy. Even if it's just a retool of, of Siege Springer, I just want a new figure of this guy. Even if it's like a Generation Select exclusive, please Hasbro, give us a new Sandstorm. He's long overdue a new figure in my opinion. Because then I could recommend a, a more posable uh, sandstorm. I almost said Springer there. Because if we had a new sandstorm in the War for Cybertron trilogy toy line, then I could recommend it for people who like more posable figures. But for now, if you don't mind that this guy is pretty much a brick, then I definitely do recommend this guy. I, I definitely really... This is one of my favorite G1 figures now. And he's... Even if this guy's my most recent G1 figure, he's become a favorite of mine. Well, this has been my review on G1 Sandstorm. And this is Charlie Young, signing off.